Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our webinar today, the three essential tools for business success. Just a reminder that this webinar should take about 45 minutes and then we will have any time for Q&A at the end of the session. So this is me, Tamsin Jefferson Harvey. I'm the founder of Seed Accounting Solutions. My contact email address is there should you wish to um, get in touch with me after this webinar. And there's just a little um, disclaimer at the bottom there, which is just to remind you that this web webinar is general in nature and it's for educational purposes only, and it doesn't substitute any professional advice. So please do bear that in mind. So first of all, I just wanted to go through our values at Seed Accounting Solutions. So our, our core values are to educate, support and empower. And we use those these three values really internally and externally. It's very much the sort of fundamentals of everything that we, we work from. So our webinar programme is very much part of the education value, uh, but it also we are hoping to empower you to make your own decisions and give you the information and the tools that you need to help make better decisions and gain confidence in running your own business. If you've got any questions about that, please do let me know. So I'm just going to kick things off with a thought of the day from The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. Success isn't overnight. It's when every day you get up a little bit better than the day before. It all adds up. So just remember those small marginal incremental changes. There's no magic bullet for business success. It takes a lot of hard work. However, using the tools that you have at your disposal can make sort of huge improvements and really rewarding ones as well. It's not really about making drastic changes. As I said just a minute ago, it's about making those small incremental changes and they will all add up. Changing old habits to get a little bit better each day. So just want to start by asking you a question, you know, how well is your business delivering on your dreams? We're all in business for a reason. Take a moment to think about what you wanted your business to give you when you first started, because quite often we get a little bit distracted along the way. What did you dream it would be like? What score would you give yourself out of five for how well the business has delivered on those dreams right now? Five being 100% your dreams are a reality and life can be sweeter and one being the dream is more of a nightmare and sometimes you worry that your team members are making more money than you are. We've all been there. Being in business can be lonely at times and it really helps to know that other people are experiencing many of the same cha challenges that you are. As accountants, this is what we see and this is why we've put together this webinar so that you can learn how to achieve better success in your business. So I hope that you find this of use. Now, this is the agenda. So again, just a reminder, my usual disclaimer, the information in this educational webinar is general in nature and they substitute for professional advice. So we are going to be going through today, the power of 1%, having the courage to change, the three essential tools, next steps, and then we'll have Q&A at the end. So, First of all, we're going to look at the power of 1% and how small changes add up over time. Change isn't easy. And so we need to have the courage to face change. Then we'll take a deep dive into the three essential tools. And then we'll look at the next steps and any answers that you have. So this is the power of 1%. This is what I mean when I say small changes add up. If you improve by just 1% each day, after a year, you'll be a massive 37.8 times better off. So, for example, if you increase your sales by 1% each day for a year, by the end of the year, you'd be selling 37.8 times more each day. What would your business look like if you increased sales by 37 times? For product-based businesses or manufacturing businesses, think about what your business could look like if you could lift production or sales by 1% consistently, or if you could reduce costs by 1% continuously. What this formula here on this slide shows is the long-term benefits of continuous improvement. Of course, it's unlikely that you're going to actually achieve 1% growth in sales or 1% reduction in costs every single day. Um, but the point here is to illustrate the power of compounding growth. Even if you achieve just 1% improvement each week, you will double in just over 16 months. So that's a huge amount. So 1% each week rather than every day 
and you will double what you're currently doing in just 16 months. So all we're doing is simply looking to achieve continuous and sustained improvement. So let's consider what happens if you don't make those changes. Let's say your competitors sharpen their game or you fail to keep track of changes in technology or you manage your team ineffectively because you're so busy and your sales start to reduce by 1% each day. If your daily sales are currently, say, a £1,000 and your sales regress by 1% every day, your sales will be just £30 by the end of the year. <laughs> so you go from £1,000 a day to £30 a day. So... For those of you in, in sort of manufacturing or, or product or sort of creative things where you're making things, if your efficiency decreases by 1% each day or your costs increase because you're not checking them, what's going to happen there to your business as well? Again, your sales or production is unlikely to drop in a linear way like this. The important point is that unless you make continuous improvement, your business performance is likely to drop over time. Okay, so it's about that consistent and sustained improvement. As Einstein said, compounding is the greatest mathematical discovery of all time. Love a bit compounding. <laughs> I did a, recently I did a, a compound interest calculation for somebody's mortgage. This is on a personal level, not a business one. I'm not a mortgage advisor. <laughs> it can be quite fun. I've got a lovely another quote for you. This, this webinar is full of quotes that are, you know, hopefully can inspire you and, and, and a little bit more. Change is inevitable. Growth is optional. So we know this. We know that change is inevitable. Look at the last year and everything that's happened to us. We've adapted. We've changed. Compare ourselves to where we are, hundred, you know, compared to where we were 100 years ago. Things change and change happens all the time. But it's not easy. If you think about other businesses that haven't adapted to change and what the impact has been on them, a lovely little demonstration here of what happens when companies don't adapt to change. So Kodak became the poster child for companies who failed to react to their changing market. In 1976, Kodak claimed a market share of 85% but they failed to adapt to change. And by 2003, their market share had diminished to 15%. Kodak actually developed the first digital camera, but worried about the effect going digital would have on the sale of camera films. Their failure to accept the change from film to digital had a massive impact on their profitability. Now, most of us carry a camera in our pockets, instantly uploading photos to social media. And... Just so you know, Kodak released their first smartphone in 2017. Another example here, at the height of its success, Blockbuster had over 9,000 stores worldwide. I'm sure a lot of us remember going to Blockbuster to rent a video for the night 20 years ago, possibly more than that actually. This is another story of a business that had the opportunity to change, but didn't see the value in changing at the time. In 2000, when Netflix was starting out with a male DVD rental service, the CEO approached Blockbuster to, to discuss Netflix handling Blockbuster's online business. However, he was, according to Forbes, laughed out of the room. In 2004, Blockbuster finally set up their own male DVD rental service, when the CEO of Netflix mentioned that Blockbuster had thrown everything but the kitchen sink at Netflix in order to compete with them, Blockbuster sent the CEO a kitchen sink the next day. Netflix now has over 150 million users. And the last time I checked, I believe Blockbuster had one remaining store. So what those examples of disruption highlight is that change is not easy. When we're riding the wave of success, it can be hard to see the need to change. We all have inbuilt habits and behaviors that we repeat. We also have so much going on in our lives that it's hard to start doing something different. On this slide here, I've got the formula for change and it will help you increase your ability to change. On the right-hand side, we've got an R. This stands for resistance. This is what's stopping you from changing your behavior. This can come in three forms, no time, 
no money, or you don't see the benefit of changing behavior. You need to build up the left-hand side of the equation so that these variables are greater than your resistance. So the D, going over to the left-hand side now. The D stands for dissatisfaction with the status quo. You need to understand the consequences of not changing your behavior. What happens if you don't learn how to grow your business or improve profitability? Profit may drop, you might not be able to take that family holiday, or you may have to get rid of some team members. Next up, we've got vision, V. Oh, jumped ahead a little bit there. What will your life look like if you do change your behavior? What do you want your future to look like? More holidays, more money, more time with your family, having a clear vision will help you to change your behavior. And finally, what are the first steps you need to take in order to, to achieve that vision? We depict this with a lowercase f to represent the fact that the steps are small and easy to take. Remember the consequences of inaction will heighten your dissatisfaction and cause the business to regress. The fact that you're here today means that you're open to change. So that's a great step in the right direction. The three essential tools I'm going to show you now are the first steps that you need to make to take to start moving towards your vision of a positive future state. As we'll see from this formula, your resistance to change has to be outweighed by your dissatisfaction with the status quo and your vision of a positive future state. So bear this formula in mind. So what are the three essential tools for business success? In my opinion, they are these three things, an annual business plan, an annual forecast, and ongoing, uh, ongoing reporting with accountability. Your business plan is your guiding document to deliver the business outcomes you dreamed of. Your annual forecast shows you the numbers you need to achieve your desired business outcomes. And ongoing reporting with accountability means regularly monitoring your results and having someone hold you accountable for completing your actions and achieving your goals. So they're all very interlinked and intertwined. So we're gonna let, take a look at um, each one in a little bit more depth now. So there's literally thousands of books and articles on the internet about the components of a business plan. A lot of people consider a business plan as like this 32 page document that you have to create in order to get a loan from the bank. And you basically spend hours and hours doing it. And then it sits at the bottom of a filing cabinet or a drawer gathering dust for several years and decide, until you decide to recycle it. What we think of as an annual business plan is a plan that goes over 12 months. It's concise. It's on one page. So this is what we believe are the key components of an annual business plan. One, a clear purpose. This should be a five to seven word statement that explains why your business exists for your customers. You need a clearly articulated vision. What will your business look like in five years time? Thirdly, what you want to achieve. What does your business need to deliver to you? Remember, your business is there to serve you, not the other way around. And that is something that I am consistently drumming in to all of my clients. State the hours you want to work, the holidays you want, and how much money you want to make. It might not all be possible in the very beginning, but by incrementally implementing changes over the time, you can do that. Last year, I chose to take three weeks holiday. This year, in my business plan, I decided to set myself four weeks. And next year, I've got a target to take five weeks holiday. So all I'm doing is trying to make little changes each year to improve my business and my life. Four, a high level budget. So this helps identify your gross revenue targets for the year and is based on what you've recorded in the what we want to achieve section. The budget also forms the basis for essential tool in number two, the forecast. And I'd just like to add as well about the budget. I use this in my sessions with people who are, who are doing a business planning, either in a workshop or in a one-to-one -one session. I also use the budget to sense check things. Is the money that they want out of the business realistic for the sales that they're achieving? What sales do you need to achieve in order to take that money out? Are your sales high enough to cover your overheads? All of that's a really great, very quick and easy way of 
looking at whether the figures in your business are all correct and whether they work. It's no point thinking that you want to make X amount of sales and take out loads of money and then find out actually you can't actually manage them. So that's really what I think is a really important element of the business plan with a budget is to just sense check all those figures. Five, key performance indicators. These are the things to measure that will make sure that you're on track to achieve your goals. For example, sales per day, milk production per month if you're a farmer, gross profit, or even the number of days team members are achieving their individual targets. Choose a maximum of five and make sure you can measure them. And what gets measured gets improved. And that's the most important thing. We have a list of KPIs that are suitable for different businesses. So if you're unsure of where to start, we will go through that in our in the in a business planning session or, or in the workshop. But you can also just search for them on an internet search engine and find a you know KPIs relevant to your industry, and you might have a bit of an idea there. These will also change on a year-to-year basis. So the KPIs you have in your business one year might change the next year. It all depends on where your business is at and the journey it's on. So right at the very beginning, you might be looking at getting enough customers in. And then as you grow, it might be looking at, say, staff efficiency and making sure that your wage to sales ratio is correct. As it goes further and everything's kind of consolidated and the business is ticking over nicely and it's all got sustainable growth, you might then want to start looking a little bit more into what you can do with your business to take more money out as your, as a business owner yourself. So just remember that those KPIs will change over time, but it's really important that you choose a maximum of five. I would generally work with three. I think any more than that. I think some people need five, but I would, and I, I, if you've got a team, then you may well have five because you can potentially have a couple that are relevant to different departments or team members, as opposed to it being a company goal. But the key there really is that you can make sure that you can measure them. Point six, we've got opportunities and vulnerabilities. Your business plan needs to identify these so that your goals can maximise the opportunities and mitigate the vulnerabilities. And it's really important to look at these and, and just acknowledge them. Because you don't want to feel like you've missed an opportunity or you didn't see a vulnerability in the business that's going to suddenly come along and smack you in the face. And finally, goals for the year. Make sure these goals are measurable and achievable. We talk about SMART goals. These should cascade into 90-day goals with clear actions and a person responsible for each action. It's important to review your business plan regularly to ensure the actions are being completed by the due date and update your 90-day goals each quarter. We will be going through this in a little bit more detail in a couple of slides time, so just bear that in mind. But firstly, these are the rules that we follow when it comes to developing a business plan. Firstly, all key decision makers should be involved and complete pre-work before the planning session to reflect, prepare and be heard. So if you're not doing a session with us and you're just building out your own business plan, you need to make sure that you've sort of brainstormed all of your ideas beforehand, identified, you know, potential things and you all kind of come along and you, you throw that out there beforehand because otherwise the session can end up being diluted by various things that are thrown out. We obviously recommend using an independent facilitator because by doing this, especially if you've got several people involved in this process, you don't want to have one person dominating this discussion. And it also can encourage alignment between different people and the key team members in, in that session. Your business plan should be on one page, double-sided. As a reminder, there's no point developing a 32-page business plan that's going to gather dust in a drawer somewhere. It needs to be visible at all times to guide your decision-making. I have mine on a pin board right next to my desk, and I look at it every single day. And it's really helpful for me to use as a reminder that every single day, are the actions that I'm doing today, are the things that I'm doing, or the tasks that I'm doing, are the jobs that I'm doing, are they helping me achieve any of my goals, my KPIs? Are they going to improve any of that? And I use it every single day. It's really the foundations of what I do every single day. If you've got a team or people that you work with, share your plan with them. 
you can remove some of the sensitive information if you don't want to share some of the bits about your personal stuff or the finances or whatever but it will encourage your team to buy into your vision and align their goals with yours and then you report against your plan monthly to monitor your progress review and update your goals and actions each quarter to ensure you're on track to achieve your annual goals and then do a full review and update of your business plan each year some things such as your vision and your values may not need to change but take the time to review each section some things might have changed over the year and others may stay the same. So what would this business plan look like? Here's an example. And this is, this is the template that we use when we hold business planning sessions with our, our clients. So all components are clearly identified. We like to keep things simple and easy to read and understand. So we've got purpose, vision, what we want to achieve and value section at the top. Very easy and straightforward. Then we have our high level budget. We update the year to date column each quarter to ensure we're on track. Next, we have the KPIs we'll be measuring. You can see we've added targets for our KPIs so that we know what we're aiming for. Our ideal client and value proposition are clearly identified. These should be shared with the team. We then have our opportunities and vulnerabilities, and then we've identified our most critical challenge. So I'm just going to give you a time to read through that, just as a bit of an idea of what might be needed. And then finally, on the back, we would have, sorry, jumped ahead a bit there. And on the back page, we record our goals and our actions. So this is the second page of your business plan, your 90 day action plan. So first you determine your annual goals. Then you break each goal down into 90 day goals. Each of these goals should be a step towards achieving your annual goals. So bear that in mind. Now, obviously, depending on where you are in your year, so if you're in your first quarter, it may well be just very much laying the foundations. Obviously, as the year progresses, you want to be making sure that you're, you're actually doing more tangible work to meet those goals. Then you work out the actions that you must take in order to achieve those goals. And then recording who is responsible for each action and the due date is essential to make sure that someone is accountable. Okay, so you want to make sure that you list who is going to do that. Now, if it's just you in your business, fine, put your name and put a date. And then you know that you're the one that's responsible. It may be that you can bring in outsourced resources, any freelancers or any subcontracted people that you use. If you've got a team, obviously, you may well have people in your team who can carry out some of those actions. We recommend setting three to five goals for the year. This ensures they are achievable and you have time to focus on each goal. I tend to choose three business goals and one personal goal, and I find that that works quite well for me. Totally depends on what you've got, the availability in your business of you know, different people and so on. So. That's your first tool, your annual business plan. If anyone's got any questions, just pop them in a QA and a pane and we can answer them at the end. Oh, there's some other goals. And actions. So be really clear about the difference as well, by the way, just reviewing this, between actions and goals. So actions are the things that are going to help you achieve your goals. Bear that in mind. Okay. So the second essential tool is the annual forecast. In the past, you might have prepared a forecast because the bank asked for one, but it's something that should happen each year. If you don't know how much money will be coming in and out of your business and when, you can't make informed decisions. Even if your business has a positive cash flow, you should prepare a forecast. It can help you unlock a lot of cash just by making a few changes. It might give you the information you need to know when you could take on a team member or when you can buy some additional equipment or you know maybe maybe you want to take some additional money out of the business yourself as a business owner so even if you know that you've got cash in your business and everything's ticking over nicely we still recommend that having a forecast can really help you identify some opportunities or potentially vulnerabilities in your business 
your annual forecast will break your high level budget from your business plan into monthly targets, accounting for seasonality and allowing you to predict and prepare for large cash outflows. So think about if you're a limited company, you might have your corporation tax bill. You may well be VAT registered when you're VAT quarters and when you're going to have to pay that. If you're self-employed, when is your tax bill owed? What about the payment on account? Do you have the funds available for all of that? For some product businesses, Christmas is obviously a very busy period of time. You know, do you have enough money to see you through? Can you afford to take on extra hands to help you through that period? All of these things will help with a forecast. There are three types of forecast, which we can combine into something called a three-way forecast. And they all, they all basically sort of feed out of one another. The first forecast is your profit and loss which shows whether you're going to make a profit or a loss each month and gives you the flexibility to allow for seasonal fluctuations instead of lumping all income and expenditure into one annual total. It could show that while some months you make a loss, overall you'll make an annual profit or vice versa. You may have some months which are profitable, but actually overall you're making a loss. What's really important to understand is that profit and cash flow are not the same some costs don't appear in a profit and loss forecast, so you need to make sure that you're going to make sufficient profit to cover the additional cash costs. So that could be any tax liabilities and things like that. They don't show up on the profit and loss. So you need to bear that in mind. That then obviously brings me to the cash flow forecast, which is generally the most common forecast that people look at. And this shows all movements of cash in and out of your business on a month by month basis and allows for tax payments, asset purchases and sales direct to drawings, loan drawdowns, and any repayments of loans. Well, the profit and for loss forecast shows you your business efficiency. The cash flow forecast shows you whether you have enough cash to survive and thrive, or whether it's all going to go downhill. Cash is the oxygen for the business, after all. The last forecast is your balance sheet forecast, which shows, your, shows you whether the overall value of your business or your net worth is increasing or decreasing. It measures your assets, liabilities and equity and shows whether you're solvent or insolvent. Highly profitable companies can and do go broke. So the balance sheet forecast gives you an early warning of risk. For example, if you're having a huge increase in sales, but you're slow collecting your debtors, and you've got loads of outstanding invoices that haven't been paid. You could be in a position where you can't actually pay your bills as they fall due because you've got so much debt outstanding. So as you can see, your forecast tells you a lot about the health of your business. And that's why it's one of the three essential tools and where you must do it annually rather than only on request by the bank. Here are our rules for developing your annual forecast. There are plenty of softwares out there to help create your forecast and you should be able to do some of it yourself we recommend futurely predict it's 20 pounds a month or actually it's free if you sign up with iwalker pay at the moment for a 12 month period you get a free predict license it plugs into zero it generates a forecast you don't actually have to do anything in there you can build out different scenarios if you wanted to take on a member of staff or you wanted to see what it looked like if your set if your sales increased by a certain amount it's a really intuitive tool and it's super helpful for anyone who's trying to manage their forecast themselves if somebody comes to us and they want to forecast we'll generally send pre-work to complete before we prepare it to ensure that they've identified all the expected income and expenses obviously there's only a certain amount that we can gather from zero or any financial information so sometimes we will need that input start with your desired profit and then work backwards to calculate the sales you need to achieve to obtain that profit so if you're doing a this all on a spreadsheet for example this is what you'd need to do so you start with your desired profit work backwards to calculate the sales compare this to last year's results is your desired profit realistic and achievable review your figures and make any required adjustments. Of course, we can help you develop your forecast and identify areas you can improve your cash flow. But sometimes money, as I've just said, cash is the oxygen in a business. And if you cannot afford to pay a professional to do it, see what other things you can do, see how much of it you can do yourself. Go from there.
anybody's got any questions about any software, please do let me know and I can put you in touch with someone. The third essential tool for business success is ongoing reporting with accountability. Now, reporting means regularly monitoring your results to ensure you're on track to achieve your goals. If you're not measuring your financial results and the key drivers of your business, you cannot properly manage them. Technology provides you with real-time data support, informed decision-making is why we champion Xero or any software really, rather than a spreadsheet. Xero will give you up-to-date, accurate business information 24 seven. Compare real-time data against your forecast, make adjustments if required, stay on track to achieve your goals. We recommend preparing management reports quarterly to measure your key performance indicators or your KPIs. Some larger businesses may benefit from having it monthly, but most, most small businesses are fine with a quarterly. If you wait until the end of the year to review your annual accounts, the data is too old to be of much use. So by producing these regular reports, you can quickly respond to any unexpected changes in your results. Of course, without some accountability, you're less likely to take the actions you need to in response to your reports. So I personally joined a mastermind group. We have 90 day plan, we have 90 day goals that we set. We have to list all our actions and we're held accountable to that. We meet every other week. I also have somebody who helps me create my business plan and I also have a mentor. Now, all of these people are external who can look at my business and look at my finances and look at my decisions with a totally fresh set of eyes. And it's a really helpful addition to my business. So just to cover a little bit more about the benefits of accountability, people often start with great intentions, producing reports for the first couple of months and then get busy with their day to day tasks. If you have an accountability coach or buddy or whatever you want to call them, you'll ensure you dedicate time to review your numbers and check that you've taken the actions you need to. Accountability helps you to set aside time to work on your business and complete the actions you set in your business plan or respond to your regular reports, building better habits for your business. Your accountability buddy must be somebody independent. They must have the backbone to give you the consequences for an action, but the heart to care. <laughs> they can't be afraid to upset you when you need a dose of accountability and they need to care about you achieving the goals that you've set. It's quite important to find that right balance. You must have clearly documented actions with due dates to ensure you have a deadline to work towards. And there must be consequences for an action. If you keep failing to complete your actions, something is broken and it's likely you have the wrong person holding you to account. So who are you going to get to hold you accountable? So my aim is to help you take today's message and implement some positive change in your business. So what are your next steps from here? Doing nothing is not an option. Doing what you have always done is likely to give you the same results if you, as you've had in the past. Make a clear plan that you can articulate to your team. Develop your forecast for the year and repeat this annually. Find someone to hold you accountable. Focus on what you can do as opposed to worrying about what is out of your control. And finally, we are here for you and we want to help. So I'm just going to move on now to how we can help you. So first of all, I hope that this webinar has been helpful for you. Just a reminder that the, this information is educational and general in nature and it's no substitute for specific tailored advice from a professional. So there are several ways that we can help you more specifically beyond this webinar. So we can help you implement the three business tools. One of the things we recently launched is our business planning workshop. This was because we felt that every business should have a business plan as per this webinar. So what I wanted to do was make it more accessible to the smaller businesses who potentially didn't have £1,500 for a one-to-one -one session. So we've now created a workshop which is done in a group format and carried out over a period of three weeks and basically I guide you through the process of, of creating your business plan. So that's the um, for business planning we do also offer one-to-one -one sessions for £1,250 plus VAT. So the uh, oh the one-to-one -one session by the way is a four-hour session we generally nowadays carry it out over Zoom and it will be carried out over two sessions of two hours 
And we really feel that actually having that break in between can sometimes just give everyone time to absorb the information and digest everything and then kind of come back with a fresh pair of eyes and a fresh head. But we, you will get a business plan similar to the one that we went through in one of the earlier slides. We can prepare a cash flow forecast for you. As I mentioned, we do also work with Futurely Predict. So if you're interested in hearing a little bit more about that, we can certainly hook you up. They do have a deal at the moment, but I'm not really sure. It basically works out as around £20 a month for a Predict license. You may want a more detailed forecast or you may, may want someone to sort of build you out a more specific forecast, especially if you know that you've got a lot of change coming up in the next year. We can build that out for you. Quarterly coaching. We kind of use quarterly coaching and quarterly strategy sessions. We use the term interchangeably. It's really an opportunity to have an hour out of your business every quarter, sit down, look at what the business has done, create an action plan and really help you to move forward and achieve the goals that you want in your business. So that starts at around £75 plus fat per month. It depends on the size of your business. So it, it may be a little bit less and it may be a little bit more depending on, on your business and the number of people involved. Management reporting. So again, we recommend doing this on a quarterly basis, but we charge it on a monthly fee which is from £54 plus VAT. Now, again, we have different prices for this, depending on whether you just want a management account, whether you want a meeting, whether you want a report. We can do like a little quick pre-recorded video for you that just runs you through the report and explains things. We also have a discount if we're already doing your bookkeeping because we know that the information will, will be there in some of the adjustments, so we'd have less work to do. Finally, at the very end, we have a free building better habits worksheet worksheet now changing the way that you run your business is all about building better business habits so making small changes add up which add up over time so this worksheet we can send you free and it will help you identify the one area of your business that you'd like to consciously improve daily and then finally we also offer a complimentary one hour meeting to discuss your goals and find out how we can work together to achieve them so that's how we can help you before we go, I thought I'd just share this one quote with you. Action is the foundational key to all success. And this is by the artist Pablo Picasso. So commit to at least three actions that you're going to take as a result of today's webinar. Write them down. Give each of them an owner and a completion date. And remember, if you need our support, we are here for you. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this webinar today. We appreciate that your time is super valuable. So I am very pleased that I have done this in 45 minutes. We do have an exit survey. If you're watching this live, if you're watching on record, you won't have it. If you are watching this live, please do consider completing the feedback survey. It really helps us to improve our educational service to you all. We hope that you have, we've given you plenty of ideas and some clear next steps for you in your business. And please do get in touch if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day and I will speak to you soon.